Hello and welcome back to Sorted Food. Today, two of our normal home cooks, Jamie and Mike, will be blindfold taste testing two dishes. One made with a premium or more expensive ingredient and one made with the same ingredient but a more basic, cheaper version. The question is, can they pick the premium? Hopefully, after today, we should all be a little bit wiser about what ingredients we should be spending our money on. Or oh, where we can save. I'm ready. Bring it on. Dish number one. Yeah. Same as always, A and B. One of those made with a more premium version of the same ingredient. As with all of the dishes you're trying today, they are made identically. Weights and measurements do not change, neither do methods or cooking temperatures. However, only one ingredient has changed. We've swapped it out for a more premium version. Whoa. Oh, it's so fishy. What you're eating is two savoury onion pies. Think pistoladier, but kind of encased in puff pastry. So yes, there's anchovy. Yes, there's red onion. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not tasty. Your <laughs> <laughs> face says otherwise. I'm just not an oily fish person. What we're looking at is the puff pastry. Oh. This pastry tastes a little bit drier. This tastes crispier, butterier, but also has a little bit more give in the texture. Like there's a little bit more to it. Ooh. So we're gonna have to ask you to pick your premium. Which is it? I feel like I'm getting more butter, more taste from the pastry from B. And on that basis, B is my premium. Oh, B, bold. Very confidently B. You can now remove the blindfold with B locked in. Not that you're allowed to, but would you change your mind? Visually, I'm not actually seeing too much of a difference. There are subtle differences. Like if you look at the edges, you can see it's puffed out with the layers, whereas this almost is two separate layers fused together. I can indeed reveal that the premium pastry is B. Yes. Correct. A is Just Rolls puff pastry, sold as a chilled product and ready to quite literally just unroll and use. It is one of the cheapest options on the market. Now they do do a butter version if you want their all butter puff pastry. This one is the, the oil and vegetarian vegan version. And B is Dorset puff pastry and it is made using very artisanal ingredients. So local regional Dorset butter and even locally milled flour. And they actually say the taste and characteristics of their pastry might even subtly change throughout the year and throughout the seasons. But what they do is they make it fresh, no additives or preservatives, and then lock that freshness in and sell it frozen. And no diminishing of the quality from freezing it. No, and although the Just Roll brand, that one is chilled, you can also buy frozen versions of it and it's perfectly suitable for home freezing. So if you were to buy it chilled and then you didn't get around to using it in the next couple of days, your plans changed, you can always freeze it, defrost it, and it behaves much the same. If I do use puff pastry, I use pre-bought stuff. I have gone for this in the past. So you use the Just Roll a lot. Are you happy with what it gives you? Home? Yes, because in my mind, the only alternative is to making it from scratch. And everything that I've learned in the last 12 years of doing this is don't bother making puff pastry at home, buy it. It's great stuff and there are even restaurants out there that are using that because it is just not economical to have people in-house mm -hmm. putting the time and effort and labour and having the space in the fridge to be folding and chilling puff pastry when you can get a product as good as that. Price-wise, A, not the most basic, but more basic version, one pound a roll. How much for B? Bearing in mind, they're pretty similar size. Mm -hmm. B, I think it's about five centimetres bigger, but in terms of weight, they're pretty much the same. Two pound 50. I'm gonna say two pounds 50. Yeah, I think it's two and a half times tastier, in my opinion. Mm. It's five pounds a roll. I think that's okay. I would still buy it. And if you're not wrapping, premium fillet beef, but actually you've got a filling of things like onions, mm -hmm. then the pastry is where you can spend your money. Yeah. Make the pastry premium and put the bits inside it that are cheaper and more accessible, like tinned anchovies and onions cooked down for a long, slow time. Nice, well you got that one right. Let's move on to number two. Dish number two, Mike. Two plates in front of you. And that's delicious. It's a risotto, isn't it? Yeah, I've made you a little risotto. Oh, for goodness sake. Am I on a date? Because I did not agree to this. <laughs> Why didn't you get a blindfold on? 
<laughs> oh no, I am on an Ebba's date. That is delicious. We have to be talking cheese. Not many ingredients involved in a cheese risotto. Which ingredient has changed? So instantly I'm thinking things like pecorino or maybe gruyere, but we haven't covered parmesan in one of these. So I think it's parmesan. Correct. Two plates of risotto bianco, which is parmesan risotto. What would you expect from a more premium parmesan? I'd expect more funk, but less harshness. Can you pick the premium? I, I, I prefer B, it's got more flavour. I think it's the premium because it's a far sharper, punchy cheese. A is the premium. Okay, you've locked in your answer. You can take off your blindfold. I don't think I can see any difference at all. I can reveal that the premium Parmesan is A. Oh, it's one of those ones that's like subtle and widespread, not sharp and punchy. So A is 30 months Parmigiano Reggiano, whereas B is Accardo's Parmigiano Reggiano. Interestingly, they are both PDO which means they come from a protected designation. They both have they to be, by definition, from Italy. They both have to use unpasteurised cow's milk. They both have to use a combination of morning and evening milk. They both have to be aged for a minimum of 12 months, but they also have to be brined once they've been, which is, gives it that, that saltiness as well. The difference is that A all comes from a single herd that's a specific brown cow in that region, and is aged for longer. So I'm sorry, a cow's milk tastes different in the morning, morning to the evening than it does in the evening. Yes. In the morning, <laughs> it's had it, in the morning, I, it's been it's had a night to rest. Yes, rest. Whereas yeah. if it's been if the cow's been running around all day, it's like a milkshake, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now what I mean is the morning milk is like naturally whole milk, uh -huh. whereas the milk from the night before is naturally skimmed or semi-skimmed because it's had time to settle and they take it off and they mix the two together. It's the same way it's been done since Roman times. It's a protected cheese making process. You can instantly tell the difference. They look very, very different. The texture is very, very different when you bite into it. B is more funky. It does have more, I'd say it has more flavor. B has? Yeah, B has. A is more subtle and takes longer to come in. So when you're using it at home, and getting it grated over pasta, which one would you go towards? B, because I'm not necessarily using it to add a specific flavor. Mm. It's adding the flavor of Parmesan mm. to a dish that already has other flavors in it already. I still stand by my original, that, that this is my favorite. Because I think you lose some of the subtleties. So B, £15.50 per kilo. Um, obviously that's not a kilo bit, but £15.50 per kilo. How much for the more premium? I'll, I'll go double, £31. We'll go £25 a kilo. It is in fact £48.50. Whoa. It's about three times the price. So, um, so how, how much did this wedge cost then? That wedge was £16.99. Whoa! I couldn't pay that much. And in your application, it doesn't warrant it. No. And we have to pinch ourselves time and time again that we are fortunate yeah. to sit here and spend all this money mm. on ingredients. Mm. But those artisanal products from their original place of origin can be exceptional. Right, mate, third one up. Dig in. Oh. <laughs> you went in hole, blind me. I think I was on that. <laughs> it's like a kofta. It is like a kofta. Oh, oh, that's nice. Holy crap, that's good. Lamb. No. Damn. Try the, try the other one. There is a lovely salad of lentil and pomegranate, some yogurt and some dressed herbs. As always, made exactly the same. One ingredient has changed. Can you tell what the ingredient is? God, that is stunning. Is it the lamb? It is not the lamb, but that is because there's no lamb present. What? <laughs> Beef? Correct. Interesting that both of our normals thought lamb, and I think sometimes there's an association, association yeah, that, that shape and with that spicing, mm. you might think lamb, but this is in fact beef. A is a lot, I would say it's chewier. B is more tender. There's more of a crisp to the outside. B is slightly fattier and therefore carries a little bit more flavour. 
it's juicier. Need you to pick a premium, which do you think it is? I think it's B, but it's close. B is my premium. B is locked in, you can take the blindfold off. See if it makes any difference. I can't see much difference. I can now reveal to you that the premium beef, and by that we mean more expensive, is A. Damn it! Oh well, screwed that up then. So A is Dalesford organic pastured beef, 5% fat, and B is a cardo beef mint, 20% fat. You need to explain yourself. As a bit of a curveball, and I think you spotted it and identified it and absolutely took us on that red herring, the better eating experience and better flavour in this case was the cheaper, more basic version because it has more fat and fat is cheaper. So not only does A have a higher meat content, but also I'm guessing that meat has, well, better animal welfare. The cattle have been reared on the farm. They have more space, they are more free range. They are fed on locally foraged and pastured um, land, so grass fed, and therefore drives a more premium price. It also then means the chances are that beef is more marbled with fat and has more fat through it and, and has more things that need to be cut off in order to produce a lean beef mince, which mm. consumers demand. So there's even more labour that then goes into it, not just love in the animal gotcha. welfare, but then labour and cutting that fat off before it can be minced. So there's a lot more process, which therefore makes it more expensive. In a dish like this, is that necessarily what you want? I, I, I don't think so. I think it was subtle, but there was a difference. From the blind taste test, I would say, personally, no. Because I wanted the kofta that felt better to eat. I think like so many things, Parmesan included, it depends on where you're going to use it. You know, in this instance, fat content makes a big difference. Now, we've always said, buy the best that you can yep. afford. And actually, Dalesford, you could buy a Dalesford mince with a higher percentage of fat, and it would be... Mm -hmm. Yeah, a premium price, you'd get the welfare and it would be more suited to the dish. What we wanted to give you is something that shows an understanding of what the dish you're creating and buying the best product for it. Even B have high welfare standards yep. and better than a lot of places all over the world, you know, it's not intensively reared livestock. I think from a blind taste test uh, perspective, that was a sneaky move by you and the food team, but it has provoked an interesting conversation. What is good about the higher fat percentage is, again, as a normal, extra fat means extra flavour. It helps you create a tastier dish. I would also say it helps you in the construction. Moulding the kofters mm, yeah. with a slightly fattier mince is easier. B, our more basic option, is £3.60 a kilo. What do you think for A? Well, but I'd say double, so I'd, I'd say £7.20 a kilo. £12? Not a bad shout, it's 15 Okay. So it's about four times the price. Mm -hmm. um, and as always, we say buy the best that you can afford. But in this instance, also buy the most suitable for the dish. Two more beautiful plates in front of you. Not that you can see them. Dig in. Is it tapenade? Oh, it's very good nose again, Jamie. Well, it's easy to pinpoint things that you don't like, isn't it? <laughs> If it helps on the plate, you've got some cheese, some sort of herb oil, and some balsamic bits as well. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I like the toast. <laughs> Tapenade, right? Tapenade is what we're looking at. Tapenade is obviously a, an olive sort of paste. Ooh. A is far more pungent. I feel like A is an oilier tapenade, and I feel like it's saltier. I hate A far more than I hate B. <laughs> Which, what does that tell you? And therefore, if you were to pick the premium, which would it be? I do not know what I prefer. Maybe B, the argument could be it's subtler. I'm going to have to take a, a stab in the dark and say that B is the premium because I hate it less. I'm going to go with A as the premium. Interesting. Interesting logic. You can take off the blindfold now that you've locked it in. Now you can see it. Did you change your thoughts at all? B is darker and I have no idea what that means. I think I'm right in that this is oilier. I can reveal to you that the premium pitted black Kalamata olives are B. <laughs> Correct. So we deliberately made sure that we picked black olives for both and Kalamata olives for both, so we're not specifying that, and they are both pitted. B, the more premium Harvey Nichols olives, are harvested by hand from trees over a thousand years old. Picked and cured the same day, 
and they come from a specific small village on the island of Idia in Greece. Whereas A is the Greek kitchen Kalamata pitted olives, described as ripen to dark purple colour, plump in size and meaty in texture, the olives are carefully hand-picked and naturally treated. The premium olives you're buying, the jar is actually only 49% olive. The other 51% is the liquid and the brine and the, the vinegars that keep it. Whereas the more basic option is in 60% olive, 40% wow. brine. So again, different pinch points to consider. There's a definite difference, raw. That one's meatier. It's got better texture and it actually tastes quite fruity other than just mm. the oily and, and saltiness. That one actually tastes more complex and less olivey to me. It's amazing that when you combine them uh, on a plate with other ingredients, they taste like olives. Very little difference. Mm. There is mm. very little difference. So if we talk prices, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. Buy the kilo again. A, the basic option, the Greek kitchen, £8.62 per kilo. The jar itself was £2.50. How about the Harvey Nichols, again, per kilo? I mean, interestingly, and I know we talk about this in our Potential series, but there's a Harvey Nichols tax added to mm. any mm -hmm. quality improvement as well. Oh yeah, it's like 20 pounds a kilo. 30 pounds. It's not high enough. 39.50. Oh. So nearly 40 pounds per kilo. It works out at about 20 to 25p per olive. There's a noticeable difference, in my opinion. Again, when you eat them in their purest form. And here's the thing, for me, I think they're both great actually. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. you're 100% on the Harvey Nichols tax, which is a brand you trust. They also sell so many other things that it doesn't mean they're necessarily specialist and consistent in any. Mm -hmm. If I was buying a product for use, quite often I'll go to someone who's probably more qualified and the Greek kitchen might well be that. Yeah. We deliberately didn't choose the cheapest, most basic of olives. They are still great olives and they are four or five times cheaper. So Ebba's shopping tip, buy from people who know what they're doing and do that one thing, mm -hmm. sometimes over and above, like you say, the department store tax. So now, scores on the doors. With three out of four correct, Jamie, you have won today's Pick the Premium yes. and you can take all the olives home. Oh. <laughs> over to you guys, comment down below. Those four ingredients, do you buy them regularly? And if so, where on the scale do you prefer purchase. And what premium greens we should be looking at next? Comment below, subscribe and you know, all that jazz. Do all the stuff. Ebbers, is this, is this only related to cows? Yeah, it must, be, it must be because they're, they're drinking in the day, therefore they've got more water in their milk. I don't know. I mean, you're drinking a glass of water now. If I was to milk you now, <laughs> as opposed to five minutes. <laughs> 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 okay, let's <laughs> round this out. <laughs>